What's up there, YTPC? Eric Grant, the Real King Piper, coming to you from the Harley Hut here at Casa de Rana. And today, on this very warm Tuesday morning here in sunny South Texas, I have a full tobacco blend review for you on Freiburg and Trayer's Cut Virginia Plug. Okay, we're going to jump right in to the review itself and go over some bio statistics, go over some more inf some yeah, personal information, I guess you could say, my personal opinion, as well as our discussion on the uh, said subject. But before that, talk about this particular tin. Now, this tin of tobacco was given to me, I believe, by Four Eyed Piper, Zach, my northeastern brother from another mother, Beyond Black, Black Rifle Coffee Company. And I got this. I tried to find the video that I actually, where I featured this in a Yabo, and I couldn't find it. Hmm. Strange. Um, probably sometime in 2020, um, Zach purchased this particular tin of tobacco in August of 2019. I'm keeping my eye on what is called a cicada killer. Yeah, they're a member of the Hornet family. They're big, about that long. I killed one the other day. Sorry, I have ADHD. Squirrel. <laughs> okay, so back to what I was saying. So he, that's when he bought this uh, particular tin. He bought this at a local tobacconist because it has the price tag on it. And um, I put this up, um, the actual label, see if anybody could figure out the date code. Yanez or Pipe and Tobax said, yep, that's the date code right there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna put the information down across the bottom of the screen so you can see it. That date code means that this tobacco blended, tinned, let's just say born on, in November of 2018. So this thing has nearly four years of age. So as we go through the review, keep that in mind. Everything I'm going to be talking about is because the tobacco is almost four years old. Now, for those of you that are new to pipe smoking, does that really make a difference in tobacco? Um, yes, especially with Virginia's. Virginias are a tobacco that really mellows out with age, and it doesn't take that long. For those of you that have any of the Peter Stokeby Luxury Flake Series, that's Bullseye, Twist, and Navy, you know that six months to a year after you bought it, if you still have that much, you notice that the flavor gets improved, and the harshness goes away, and the tobacco improves with that time. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the vital statistics of this tobacco. So the brand, obviously, is Freiburg and Trailer. Freiborg and Trayer. <clears throat> I don't know why I want to say trailer. Hmm. Fry, Freiborg and Trayer. The blend is cut Virginia plug. It is blended by Cole Haas and Kopp. I've got my journal right here. That's what I'm reading off of. Uh, manufactured and distributed by Cole Haas and Kopp. And that's actually on the tin. I couldn't find that information anywhere, but it's down here in a very, very fine print that I almost can't see. Blend type is Virginia. Contents, Virginia. Now, according to the tin, it says golden and orange Virginia. I don't know what that means. Now, golden, I'm thinking that's bright Virginias. Orange may be uh, uh, maybe flu cured, reds, who knows. But I couldn't find the actual contents. All I could find was that it was just Virginia. The cut is a flake, and it is a very, very delicate flake at that. This has been in the tin, in the uh, jar for a week, <clears throat> but this is an example of that beautiful flake right there. Try and tilt it where it has a little bit more light on it. That is the flake, isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. And I have probably about a half a tin remaining. I'm smoking this quite a bit, which I'm going to immediately slow down because it is a unicorn blend. Okay, so. On my first smoke video, I noticed how light the uh, tobacco seemed to be. That has not changed. So the RKP scale of one to 10 on strength is at a three. Very, very mild. The strength, of course, is the mouthfeel. Overall taste is about a three. You're not getting hit in the face with a tremendous amount of flavors. They're there, but they're not slamming you in the head with a two by four. Flavors detected. None detected. I can't taste any toppings or anything like that. No vanilla, honey, chocolate, that kind of stuff. Moisture from tin. Remember, this is a flake, and it's about average, slightly higher than average. 
um, only because it's a flake and my filter is coming out slightly moist. Nicotine, not detected. I'm not detecting any kind of a nick hit. Okay, so let's start off with the tin note. This is my favorite part when it comes to Virginia's. I normally get a molasses coated grain odor. Kind of reminds me of when I worked at a feed store. I'm getting molasses coated grains, but it's very, very light. Getting that sweetness coming from the Virginia's. Kind of a light, light oatsy kind of smell to it. Not very much in the hay quality. Getting some bready notes. Mm. But it smells, oh, it smells delectable. I almost want to reach in and just grab one and chew on it right now. Probably wouldn't taste very good, but could be chewing tobacco, I don't know. Okay, mechanics. Now, it is a flake. There's a lot of different ways you can prepare the, uh, the uh, flake itself. You can fold and stuff, which I don't do. Um, you can just uh, rub it out. I do a modified rub out. I take my flake and I cut it in quarters and then rub it out the smaller pieces and it fits in the pipe for me a lot better. Once I do that, it packs well. If you're not used to a flake, it can be a little bit of a challenge because you don't want to have a, you have a tendency to want to overpack it. So be careful with that. Or underpack it. You gotta be careful of that too. It takes the light well. Stays lit when you're not talking and tamps well. Overall, it's a very well behaved tobacco. Keep in mind that it is almost four years old. Now, once lit, you're enjoying the blend. What kind of flavors am I getting? And those of you who smoke incredibly bold tobaccos, such as Maltese Falcon, maybe Pirate Cake, Plum Pudding, you know, we're talking, you know, a lot of Kia blends. You could be smoking Honda Bookshop, Old Joe Krantz, which are burly blends. You go to this kind of Virginia and you're gonna feel like you're smoking air. So the main criticism that I hear a lot is that there's not a lot of flavor to Virginia tobaccos and that's not necessarily true. Like it's not true. They do have a lot of complex flavors but the flavors are so well related and blend so well, that it's kind of hard to discern out different flavors. Like when you smoke a lot of Kia blend, you can immediately tell the creosote type of flavor from the lot of Kia. The first thing I'm getting is definitely a sweetness because this is a uh, Virginia. Now I'm not talking sugary kind of sweetness that's candy-like or maybe from a aromatic that has a heavy sugar topping. That mild, sweet, almost light honey quality is coming through. I'm not getting a lot of heavy bready notes. Again, that's probably due to the aging of the tobacco. I'm getting light citrus sweetness to it. Along the lines of orange and lemon, which is mentioned on the tin, so I tend to agree with that. I'm not getting any of the, I'm getting a little bit of grassy notes. You know, what's unusual as I smoke through this through, I didn't think there was a lot of sourness to this particular tobacco, but there is a little bit. As I smoke the blend, I find myself reaching for my drink a little bit more often to wet my whistle. The only time I really get that feeling is when I smoke an Oriental Forward blend, which has a lot of tartness to it. So there is a there's a tartness to it. Kind of like having a dry martini or something like that. And those are the flavors that I'm getting teased out of this particular blend. Recommendations. Would I recommend this blend to anybody? Absolutely. It is an exceptionally well behaved. Now keep in mind, four years of age, almost four years. And if this is a well aged tobacco, so I definitely would recommend this to anybody that was is looking to get into a Virginia flake. 
the downside is trying to find it. <laughs> uh, you can find it everywhere, um, especially on the online dealerships. You can find them. It's there. And it says out of stock. My advice, uh, go to Smoking Pipes and get on their email waiting list, which I'm on. Or check out your local tobacconist because that's where Zach found this. Now, do I like this blend? Yeah, I like this blend. Am I going to rush out and try and get it as quickly as I possibly can? Sort of along the lines of maybe trying to find an Esoterica. I, you know, Esoterica's, Freiburg and Traeger, um, they're kind of those unicorn blends. They're well-refined tobaccos. They're really good. Um, I kind of see the mystique behind them, but it's not like there's not other blends out there. Um, there are other flakes that do it just as well. But if I have the opportunity, yeah, I like this blend. If I have the opportunity, I'm going to get another tin of uh, Virginia Plug. That's for sure. Because it is a very, I mean, was it uh, Ghost of the Cobb, I think we were talking? Let me check my uh, iPad here. Don't need this anymore. Got an iPad right down here. Let me go to my video. Comments. Let's see here. Somebody made mention of it. Let's see here. Let me just go to the video comments here. There's Pipe and Tobacks uh, comment right there. You know, I tried to play right there. So I'm going to go to my actual comment section here, the full comments. Yeah, Smoking the Ghost. No, Smoking the Ghost. Not Ghost of the Cow, but Smoking the Ghost. My bad. Um, mentioned that, yeah, this is a semi-unicorn for Virginia smokers. I agree. I would even go that it actually is a full unicorn blend. When it drops, it's gone quickly. I have a feeling that's probably true. Uh, he says, sounds to be in my hot weather wheelhouse. Yeah. It's kind of one of those blends you can have on a on dog days of summer when it's 100 degrees, 105 degrees outside, heavy humidity, you want to smoke, but you like anything that's more than air is going to be too much, and this is the perfect blend for that. You don't have a lot of things that are hitting you really strong in the, in the palate. It's kind of like a, a nice, crisp, summer lager beer. Hmm. And here I am in the morning. When it's nice and hot because I'm starting to sweat. And I've got hot coffee. But I got a fan right there because I'm going to turn that on because uh, I'm getting hot. Which means this video is over. And until next time, I'm wishing you happy smokes, peace out, and give Cut Virginia Plug a try. <laughs>